What's up, Cypress Bay? I'm Alyssa Wheelock. And I'm Gabby Kernis. And Aftershock starts now. You know, I've lived in Florida my whole life, but I don't actually know anything about hurricanes. Well, maybe Alice can inform you about the formation of hurricanes. With Hurricane Dorian just missing Florida's coast, people have begun to wonder, how could a hurricane's path change so drastically? Or better yet, how hurricanes work in the first place? Hurricanes form in warm water oceans and require wind gusts that collect water vapor to form clouds. As the pressure in the atmosphere changes, air moves from the higher to lower pressure area, causing wind speeds to go up as the pressure goes down. The winds will then blow faster, twisting to create the eye of the storm. A storm receives a name once it becomes a tropical storm, or has wind speeds from 39 to 73 miles per hour, and becomes classified as a hurricane at 74 miles per hour. Hurricanes can be classified into five categories, and are considered major hurricanes when it's a category three, with wind speeds of 111 miles per hour or higher. The Bermuda High acts as a blockage that storms can't pass through, and used to cause storms to move offshore up the east coast of the U.S. before curving out to sea. In 2004, it expanded south and west, allowing more storms to travel into the Gulf of Mexico. Hurricanes are recorded by using satellites, computer modeling, and aircraft missions that send flight crews through the eye of the storm. A device is then dropped in the center to collect data that will later be recorded through the National Hurricane Center's computer systems. This information will be published to send out a new advisory and finally issue watches and warnings. With the technology behind hurricane tracking, people are more prepared for the hurricane season. Alex Land, CBTV. Yo, hurricane party! Welcome to Mission Kindness. In the beginning of September, classes decorated their doors centered around the idea of kindness. So, what does kindness mean to you? Think by the science guy. Science rules. They by the science guy. Did you know that the moon's gravitational force uh, controls the tides of the Earth? Also, uh, did you know that the dark side of the moon isn't really the dark side of the moon? It's actually the light side on the other days. Uh. Uh, isn't this beach beautiful? Speaking of the beach, rockets. Speaking of rockets, did you know the Apollo 11 rocket was less technologically advanced than your phone? Let's try it out. It's in your phone. That's tubular. Let's try it. Watch out for the camera, camera, camera! camera! That's totally tubular. Let's try it. Yay! Oh no, oh no, 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 no! The sun, sustainer of all life. The earth, Harbor of life. The moon. Responsible for the tides and nightlight. All of these things are important to life. 
But what do they all have in common? That's right. They're circles. So many great things in life are circles. Beautiful, round, perfect. Circles really are great, aren't they? Dude, I get it. But they are so much better smashed. Bro, you got ice cream? Mmm. That is so good. Here's Ethan with this week's Lightning Athletics. What's up, Cypress Bay? Football season is back in full swing, and our Lightning took on the Stoneman Douglas Eagles. In this week's Friday Night Lights, Cypress Bay faced off against Stoneman Douglas in an intense matchup. The Lightning's offense started off strong, quickly gaining their first three points of the game. The Eagles responded aggressively by scoring two touchdowns before the end of the first quarter. But Cypress Bay wasn't going down without a fight, as they charged down the field in retaliation to score another touchdown of their own. However, Stoneman Douglas' strong offense was able to push through Cypress Bay's defense and scored another touchdown, leaving the Lightning at a disadvantage going into the second half with a score of 9-20. After the Sound of Thunder's halftime performance, the Lightning came back ready to win. Running back Micah Allen was fired up as he ran through the Eagles for over 40 yards, but due to a penalty, his efforts unsuccessful, and the Lightning were forced to punt, allowing the Eagles to score 3 more points. During the final quarter, Stoneman Douglas managed to score another touchdown, but Cypress Bay continued to fight until the very end. Striking fast, senior Micah Allen scored a touchdown with one minute left of the game. As time dwindled down to zero, Cypress Bay attempted an onside kick to try to score more points, but Stoneman Douglas stole possession of the ball, ending the game 16-30. The Cypress Bay Lightning hope to win their next game against the West Broward Bobcats on September 13th. The girls volleyball team took on Flanagan High School in a highly anticipated district matchup. Here's Austin with the coverage. Last week, the Cypress Bay Lightning faced off against the Flanagan Falcons. The Lightning started off the first set strong, shooting down the Falcons' defense whenever possible. Flanagan offense wasn't enough to plow through Cypress Bay's defense as the Lightning led the charge, winning the first set 25-9. The Falcons powered through the second set, catching up to the Lightning 12-10. However, Cypress Bay quickly stepped up their offense, putting immense pressure on the Flanagan's crumbling defense, ending the set 25-13. The third set began with Cypress Bay scoring 16 points against the Falcons. Flanagan struggled to catch up, only scoring 8 points before the Lightning struck them down and ended the final set 25-8. Closing the game off 3-0 with Cypress Bay on top. Hi Cypress Bay, I'm Issa Parra and I'm going to teach you how to serve a volleyball in 5 easy steps. First, you want to stand at the end line, placing your foot where you want the ball to go. Second, you want to place your arm out in front and above the foot you have facing the target. Third, you want to pull your arm back like a bow and arrow. Fourth, you want to toss the ball up in the air, keeping your eye on the ball. Finally, after tossing the ball, you want to pull your arm back and hit the ball with the palm of your hand over the net. Alright guys, that's how you serve a volleyball. I hope to see you on the courts. That's all for this week's athletics. I'm Ethan Gare, CBTV Sports. That's all for this episode of Aftershock. If you want to watch previous episodes, visit us at cypressbaytv.com. And while you're at it, follow us on Twitter at CypressBayCBTV. I'm Gabby Kernis. And I'm Alyssa Wheelock. Thanks for watching.